starting. Uh, yeah, we're live now. Awesome. So um, welcome everyone who has joined us um, as we wait for a couple more participants and we start the, the presentation. I will I would love to introduce our two guests for today. We have two really special people here with us today and I'm very excited to tell you about them. Also, I would like to share um, that this is the third session of the Wakes of Change Camp. And this is our last session of, on the ocean literacy. So our next phase, which will be starting in the summer, will focus on um, capacity building workshops. This phase will be very interesting because it will it will help you all build different projects and and gain different skills that will be really helpful as you venture onto your conservation efforts. <laughs> so our Our first guest of the day is Ms. Marisa Lopez. Marisa Lopez, oh, give me one second. Here it is. Would Ms. You Marisa like me Lopez if... is, oh, sorry. Go is, ahead. Uh, oh, is an ocean advocate and a nonprofit technology professional who weaves her passion for equal representation and leadership into all facets of her career. Inspired by her passion for the ocean, Ms. Lopez found founded the Bluer Future, a company dedicated to supporting the UN SDG goals through corporate advisory and consultation. She has been an avid scuba diver for more than 20 years, and she has a master's in marine conservation and education. Ms. Lopez is the president of Amplify, a nonprofit organization that empowers underrepresented voices to be fierce leaders in tech. Thank you so much for joining us, Marisa. And our second guest of the day, is Miss Charlotte Bick. Charlotte's fascination with the sea started when she was in elementary school, as she loved to sneak down to the quarry and lake near her home and collect what she learned were fossils. These giant white chalky versions were really big, and this was her personal introduction to the history of the ocean and modern crustaceans, as the brachiopods, clams, snails, and related organisms we know today. Her professional life was transformed by working in Washington, D.C., in the Ford administration with U.S. territories, all of which were islands. There, she began a 40-year interest in the U.N. conservation on Law of the Sea that led into a long string of projects related to economic, social, legal, oceanographic, and technological aspects of oceans and islands. She worked in many locations in the Pacific region and other regions and, and continues to be interested in issues to in issues of effective management, oceanographic exploration, mapping and research. She believes emerging technologies and approaches needed in the 21st century, coupled with dispelling ignorance, can reverse the tide for our ocean. Joining Sylvia Earle and others in 2008, she seeks to facilitate and collaborate and support fund ocean exploration education, mapping, policy, advocacy, and whatever moves a positive action on ocean health, restoration, and policy. Thank you so much to both of you for joining us today, and we are very excited about this conversation and discussion. Thank you, Anna. That was a lovely introduction. I really appreciate it. It's really wonderful to be here uh, with the POP movement and with this amazing group of young people who are participating in waves of change. I can't wait to meet you all and learn more about what you're working on and what you hope to do in the world. So we're so happy to be here. Um, Charlotte and I am, are going to tell a little bit more about our own stories. Uh, so let me tell you what the agenda is for today. Uh, and, and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, it's great to be here. So Anna, yeah, again, thank you for the lovely introduction. We're going to tell you a little bit also about ourselves and our, our roles currently and how, how we kind of got to this place. Uh, so we're looking forward to introducing ourselves. And then we're going to do actually a fun in activity to get everybody engaged, which I am going to run. Um, and after that activity, I am going to ask each of the participants who are in the audience of this group to introduce themselves, because I'd really like to know who you are, where you are, and what is the change you're hoping to see in the world. Um, so we can think about, as we talk about the blue economy and marine conservation careers, we can think about you know, what would be helpful to you and what information might specifically be, be relevant to, to, your, to your work. Uh, Charlotte is going to talk about the blue economy. 
and marine conservation careers. I, I can't stress enough that we couldn't have a better person <laughs> to be talking about, uh, you know, potential careers. And then uh, at that point, we, we just would like to have some, you know, ask, answer any questions that you have uh, and have a conversation with the group. So I wanted to encourage everybody that's participating that if through our conversation, you have questions or points that you want to talk about in more detail, just to maybe make a note for yourself uh, or put them in the chat and then we will come back to that. So this is really meant to be a two-way dialogue between Charlotte and I and the audience. Um, so thanks, thanks everybody for joining. So without further ado, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into a little bit more of a story about myself, and then Charlotte will be telling you about some of her story. Uh, she cannot tell you all of it today because that would that would take many many hours. But she will tell you a little bit about her story. So like Anna said, I'm I'm Marisa Lopez, and I'm the founder of Bluer Future, which is my passion project to work on uh, present at sessions like this and help with marine conservation and education in the ways that I can. Uh, that's not what I do full time. I am actually in work in technology and I work in the Salesforce space, which means that I help to bring nonprofits on to a constituent relationship management system. It's a tech solution. Uh, what does that have to do with conservation, you say? Very good question. <laughs> uh, but what I wanted to share is that regardless, so if you care about the ocean, um, regardless of whether you make a full-time career out of conservation and policy and science or education or not, this is something that whatever your track is, if you wanna be an engineer, if you wanna be a school teacher, if you wanna be a nurse, um, whatever direction that you go in, you can really keep the ocean close to your heart and continue to work to protect it. And that's something that I've learned over the course of time. I didn't, didn't know that at the beginning. And so I have gone into the technology field, but I continue to bring conservation with me and continue to engage as a volunteer in different initiatives. And both locally and globally, I think both are very, very important. And we'll talk about that more later in our talk, but it's really, I find a lot of joy in working on local initiatives. I um, last year moved to the US Virgin Islands. I'm originally from California. That's where I grew up and that's where I got my education. And in moving to the islands, uh, I've found some local projects to become involved with. I'm involved with a local beach cleanup initiative where we go clean up beaches and pick up trash, which is a really great way to involve the community. And through that, we realized that what we really want to focus on is preventing the creation of all the trash <laughs> that we are actually picking up at the beach. So that's just an example of a local initiative that I'm involved with. I also, there's a lot of bigger global collaborative initiatives such as POP that I'm also involved with. And I think it's really important to do both. So I encourage folks to get involved with local activity in your community where you can actually work with people or you know, when things open up, you're actually be able to be engaged. That can be also very satisfying because you can literally see the change that you're making. And then it's also really important to collaborate on bigger initiatives. That's a lot of an introduction, but um, I'm just really happy to be here. I have a daughter who's 17 and also, also very involved with a lot of uh, youth global climate action movements. And it's been really a pleasure for me to participate. And I'm looking forward to talking to you all more and learning about you. Um, so Charlotte, do you wanna introduce yourself? Um, so I, I started out, um, as I said, you know, living in this little, uh, relatively small uh, city in Texas, uh, near the Texas Panhandle, the te in the Texas Panhandle, near Oklahoma, Colorado, and um, New Mexico. So we had uh, a really interesting mix of people in that area because of the fact that, that Amarillo was the place that people came to go to the doctor from all three all three states, and so. Um, I feel really lucky that I had a very diverse community of people and I, um, like most kids, I just, you know, got involved and made friends and, 
and tried to, you know, have as much fun as I could and, and joined organizations. And um, I early on, I think it was third grade that I ran for president of the class. <laughs> and, and um, I didn't win, but I did become interested in student council, which I don't, you know, I, I think that's still around. Um, but it gave me early experience in Robert's Rules of Order and, you know, some of the organizational things where people are trying to work together to accomplish things. And I mean, I think having that exposure in grade school was great. I continued on into uh, junior high and high school. And then it was then it was time for college. And I didn't really have the family resources to, um, to, to attend full time. So most of the, uh, all of the degrees that I have uh, received and everything that I've done was done working full time and going to school part time. So it took a really long time. <clears throat> that, that's the bad news. The good news is that some of the jobs that I had were so extraordinarily helpful in getting, where, get, getting me where I am now that, you know, I would honestly say that the places that I worked and even the, even the places where I volunteered and did things gave me more of, an, of, of a, of a, um, a start in what I do now than my actual, you know, degree, really. And, but I did get a degree uh, from the University of Texas um, that, I also, that I mostly finished up at the University of Hawaii by adding some new classes and things. But um, it was um, in, in American studies with a concentration in ethnic studies. And all my friends were doing professional degrees, you know, like law or, or accounting or something like that, that just would have bored me to, to tears, I have to say, um, that uh, I couldn't possibly have done that. But, but um, I did get, I did find, and they, they were all saying, oh, what are you going to do with a degree like that? Well, I ended up in my late, in my uh, early 20s, uh, working in the Ford administration with all of these wonderful countries and, and um, out in the Pacific Islands. And what, what better thing could I have studied other than ethnic studies and cultures and beliefs, values, and attitudes for getting along with the kind of people that I wanted to work with. So um, that, that was another fortuitous thing. And, and then um, next thing I know, Ford lost the election and I happened to be out working in Micronesia um, on a project in the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. And they said, does this mean you're not gonna to get to work with us anymore? And I said, oh yeah, I'll be out of a job on January 31st. And they all got together and went to the, to the high commissioner and said, can we can we hire her to come out here and, <laughs> and work with us? You know, so um, I had to fly back and pack everything up and wait until the January twenty first. And then I, the day, literally, I went in to see the the top secret clearance people who made me make a pledge that I will forget everything that I ever heard, ever knew about, you know, that was was top secret, and I and I did. And then I went straight to the airport and flew right back to Saipan. So, and uh, so I and I stayed there for about a year and a half working on projects and in uh, in all parts of Micronesia. Actually, it wasn't just in Saipan. That's where the headquarters was at the time. So um, anyway, I I um, also took on some work in the private sector while I was there too, um, which was really interesting and you know gave me a greater sense of how the community worked uh, from a corporate perspective if you will and um, and then um, all of a sudden someone that I had known from the Ford administration uh, in American Samoa uh, ran for governor and he became the first elected governor of American Samoa and he and his wife sent me a cable saying can you come? And, and work with us down here. Now, they, they, they said, you've already helped Micronesia, so we need you to come to Samoa. So I, I took the job and got on a plane and flew to American Samoa and worked there for five years uh, and then moved to Hawaii. 
And I, so I'm, by this time, I've got a lot more uh, experience. Um, I, I was the coastal zone manager for first one for American Samoa. I was in the first class of, of coastal managers in the United States. And um, it was an amazing group of people that I, I still sometimes see and, and interact with. And, um, and then I, when I, when I moved, I moved to Hawaii, I got married and moved and married someone from Hawaii. Uh, and so uh, I, but I still started working and then ended up with eventually a son and two stepdaughters who um, I, I still am looking after. I'm the, I, I've got a, a home that I've just established that's really for, for all three of my kids, all of whom have turned out to be of all things writers. So. Uh, so, um, anyway, I, the, the ocean just absolutely captivated me. And the more I looked into it, the more I learned and the more people I encountered who were just remarkable and were very useful to, you know, doing things. And one of them was, um, Sylvia Earle. She was a friend of Dr. John, John Craven, who I, whose organizations in Hawaii were legendary that he had set, set it, started. And uh, so it, it, was, uh, it was Dr. Craven that introduced me to Sylvia. And Sylvia and I ended up being, uh, I, I ended up the chairman of the board of a little startup company uh, in Kona, Hawaii. And um, Sylvia was the CEO and she was, no less busy then than she is now. And so I kind of ended up doing my job and her job, but we just kind of did it as a co thing. So, <laughs> and, uh, and, and then uh, in 2008, um, I decided I wanted to be all ocean all the time. And I, and I sent out emails to five people, one was Sylvia and her daughter. And um, they got in touch with me immediately and said, we have this project with Google that is, is failing because it's just not going in the right direction. And, and Sylvia said, you'd be the perfect person to pull it out of the fire. So I uh, ended up working on building out the ocean in Google Earth. And I, I spent a year working at Google with all those young people trying to figure out what I was doing there <laughs> because that was too old, you know? And, and uh, I was often riding bicycles around there and you can see, you know, that my hair is quite white. And sometimes they would follow me back to the office just to see where I worked. It was really funny, but <clears throat> it was a, it was a, it was a, another uh, degree, if you will, learning how to work in the technology industry by being there. And so not only did I get paid for doing wonderful work, but it also gave me on all kinds of other entrees into people all over the world. So, uh, and that was that, that, that's, I, I was I succeeded in becoming all ocean all the time. And I pretty much still am, except I, that I'd say my, my second piece of it, just to finish everything up is that, <clears throat> that what I really now do uh, is, is make connections and help people pull, pull through problems that they're trying to solve and things like that. And so, um, and that's so fulfilling. I just love it. I can't begin to tell you. So, um, and at, right the, at the moment I'm working with, as you probably heard earlier, if you were in early, I work with uh, Trammell Crow who founded earthx.org and I'm working with him. Uh, his office is in Dallas, but I live in Delaware. Um, and um, we're doing some really wonderfully interesting things there, becoming a TV station. So you might want to take a look at what we're doing at earthx.org. But um, that's, and Nor Norma met the founder just earlier this week, I believe. So <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's pretty much it for now. I, my, <laughs> my, my, my mantra for everyone that's young and going is just keep doing what you're doing and pay attention to what other people are doing and be curious and you know don't don't be shy about walking up to people and saying could I talk to you about you know what you're doing and let you and let you know what I'm doing so that you just can't imagine what a good networking opportunity it is just to take the 
the opportunity to meet someone and try to stay in touch with them. And it's, it's, it's really useful. So that's it from me. Thanks, Charlotte. That's a incredible story. Uh, I, you know, I know that you have so much to share and you work with so many great people and you are one of those greats. So uh, I think we're really privileged to have you here. I really appreciate your participation. Can you, uh, can you tell, we're seeing a little bit of your head cut off though. Can you oh. tilt the, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Um, back up here in the, in the chair. <laughs> Yeah, back up a little bit. Um, so we you, now we can see the the octopus that's next to you. I think that's what that is, right? It is. Uh, it is. I put my. This is actually um, a stuffed animal that I got for my granddaughter, and she asks to see it every night when she calls me from Hong Kong. Which is, <laughs> and so and 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 then she was saying she asked if it was a boy or a girl because she's expecting a sibling and she doesn't know which it is, and I said. Well, I think it's a girl, and she said, and she was happy. And I said, and I found this scrunchie to put on there, so she looks. Like uh, <laughs> does it does it have a name? Octavia. Okay, <laughs> I thought it might have a name. That's that's fantastic. So, thank you for that amazing introduction. I'm going to. We have an activity that I'm going to ask everybody on the phone to do. So now we're going to. Um, we're gonna get everybody engaged here. So there's a link here. I'm gonna stop share. This is a little bit of an experiment for me. Oops, let me just start. Sorry, I didn't mean to stop the share. Let me start the share again. Um, and what I'm gonna do is put this link in the chat. So if everyone could bear with me for just a minute, let me get this back up here. I lost the window. Um, we want everybody in the audience to participate in this. So if you can see here, what I'm going to do is since we're talking about the blue economy and marine conservation careers, and we've already provided a little bit of advice about conservation careers, I'm going to ask everybody. So the, the this Minty uh, link is now in the chat. And there, what's going to happen is when you click on this link, so if you can click on it in the chat, it's going to take you to a form, this form here. Um, and the question is, this is interactive, right? So what is a word that comes to mind when someone says blue economy? So feel free to type in, you can type up, up to three words in here. We know that not everybody knows what the blue economy is, and maybe it's just a guess. But I'd love to, to have uh, examples of words that you think of when someone says blue economy. So go ahead and submit and let's see if this, um, this Mintimeter starts building itself. Oh, I can see that people put a few words in there. So thank you to whoever put the words in here. Um, please continue to put words in here. So this is for everybody in the audience. There we go. Oh, I love it. So, so far we have sustainable use, preservation, profit, sustainable fishing, sustainable, I'm glad the word sustainable is in there. Sustainable marine life, ocean diversity, business, planet over profit, love it. Fisheries, ocean, the food chain. I'm going to give everyone a couple of, Keep, keep, if you have not entered, you have a little bit of time. I know sometimes it's important to have a little time to think clean, healthy. Ooh, look at all these positive words. Resiliency. Very good. I, um, this is great. Thanks. It's like great to have all this audience participation. These are really fun to do. I'm going to take a, to like, take a picture of this too. Yeah, I love it. So words that come to mind when someone says blue economy. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna keep look keep the, I'm just gonna keep this up for now. But what I'm gonna ask is um, for the participants to unmute themselves. And uh, I know that. Oh right, thank you. I love. Thanks for putting more words in there, Flora. Wait, that was a really interesting one. Flora and fauna in water. I love it. This is fantastic. 
So we're going to ask, Charlotte and I have introduced ourselves. We are going to ask for the other participants, uh, bless you, Anna, on the call to introduce themselves because we'd like to know who we're, we're talking to. So I'm going to ask everybody, and maybe Priyanka, you can help make sure that folks are unmuted, to go ahead and introduce yourselves. Are, are they able to get on video or are we just going to hear voices? If, if any of you can switch on your video, that'd be wonderful. Uh, yep. If not, that's fine too. We would love to hear your voices for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're going to ask the participants to introduce yourself. What is your name? Where are you in the world? I'm very curious. Um, you know, if the, what are you interested in? And as far as marine conservation is concerned, is there a specific issue? Are you just here to learn? Um, you know, if, if there isn't a specific interest, that's fine. And then everyone, need, I would like you to say one of the words that you entered in the, the Mentometer. Perfect. So I know we have a couple of participants. If anyone would like to just unmute and join and jump in and introduce yourself, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, will, I will start just for everyone to like have a floor to open. Uh, so hi everyone, my name is uh, Priyanka. I am currently in India and um, I work with a foundation called Ervis where I look into uh, ocean literacy and marine education with schools in India. And um, the one word that I put in here was planet over profit. Um, so yeah, that's about me. So if anyone else would like to go, I, Billy, I see that you're unmuted. Do you want to go first? Okay. okay, thank you very much. Actually, I am Tage Donfa Willi Anderson from Cameroon. And it's really a pleasure for me to be on board with you. I have listened to your insightful presentation and it's just wow. I'm really looking forward to building a rich and profound profile as the one you have presented. So I'm interested in marine protection. As you can see back here in Cameroon, we have oceans, we have, we have seas so and all the light, but unfortunately, the, there is a kind of mismanagement of the marines, the marines uh, uh, goods. And I believe that indulging in this in this activity will help us protect this environment by passing through debate because I use debate, I use public speaking. That's why I came up with the concept about debate, meaning we should discuss the, the nature, discussing the nature, discussing the environment, discussing the, the, the pollution around, discussing issues because together if we discuss, we will reach to possible solutions that will better the environment in which we live. So that is the point. And I'm really proud to be on with you on board. Any question, I'll come in to further uh, understanding on how we actually go about our uh, youth-led endeavors back here in Cameroon. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank so you much for introducing yourself. That was fantastic. And I just love the idea of bio-debate. <laughs> That's it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Billy. That was incredible. Yeah, uh, I, feel, I, think, I feel like we all need a minute to think about that idea. That's really brilliant. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Seema, I see that you're unmuted. Do you want to go yes. next? Uh, so good evening, everyone. I am Seema Sharma from India. And currently I am heading an IGCSE school, uh, but my interest in environment uh, dates back to 2013, I will say 2013 when I was the first educator selected to be part of International Antarctic Expedition with Sir Robert Swan. And I, till date, the only educator who has been uh, to the Antarctic continent. So it, it was a game changer for me. It was a life changer for me. I think being a pure science background person, I have now conviction in my voice when I talk to my students, uh, teachers and people in the education department. Uh, uh, you can say industry about yes the climate change is real I will say before 2013 I was not that much convinced about climate change but after 2013 when I witnessed myself how the climate is getting changed and how the impact is there in Antarctica I think uh, that has been a game changer for me particularly I'm interested today in this because I also wanted to know how we can now engage our, uh, because I'm dealing with the future stakeholders. So very much interested to know how we can you know, make them interested towards marine education and specifically work towards sustainable future of 
you can say the oceans so uh, so one mm-hmm. word which i have written uh, was ocean definitely and i really like this concept blue economy because i know that yes our oceans are full of wealth and we need to have a sustainable approach to dig the profit to dig them out and make a profit but in a sustainable manner so looking forward for this session thank, oh, you. thank you yeah Go sorry ahead, thank, thank you though that's incredible i like the way that you say the future future stakeholders that's and i i just would love to hear more about your experience not right now but it sounds really fascinating so yeah, priyanka absolutely. sorry Mm-hmm. No, that's that's great, and I think we have such uh, diverse people here with different experiences, and uh, I think it's great that we can get this platform together to hear everyone's experiences. Just to, um, just, just to add this, you may be wondering why my foot, my profile pic is uh, having a NASA. So that's the second love for me. I am oh. a, a Asian ambassador for NASA space education as well. So I I pursued. two diverse i can say that fields one is environment and second is space science as i, yeah, I somehow yeah. believe that it's the time to even explore space science also yes yeah. yes that's that's incredible so happy we could uh, have you join us today and share that with us um and yes i think uh, we could definitely stay connected after this and find ways in continuing this conversation sure. um sia do you want to go next hi uh, yeah So I'm Sia and I'm currently in India. Um I am a scuba diver and I feel like that really interested me into marine conservation and the ocean really. Um I remember when I started diving in 20 early 2018 and I could and I and I dived like a year after that in 2019 I could really see the difference in the in the marine life. I could see that there was less um, marine animals and I could see that the ocean temperature is much higher and i feel like that really raised a concern in me and i found that it's something that i need to focus on and um i raised a lot of it awareness in my old schools um and i feel like marine life is something that's connected to the whole ecosystem so it's something that you have to work in hand in hand to, in order to bring up a change um and i think i wrote like a renewable energy and um preservation in the uh, words perfect uh that shows the other you've had first hand experience and how personally the whole uh, marine crisis that you're experiencing right now has affected you so thank you for sharing that uh marisa was there something you wanted to add yeah where sorry where are you sia i'm currently in india thank you for sharing thank you so yeah. much uh We have Jitanshu and Mercy. If any of y'all could unmute, and we'd love to hear uh, more about you as well. So, or if you cannot unmute, you can always share it in the chat, and we would love to read that as well. Uh, Jitanshu and Mercy, any of you are there? He's working on it. Yeah, I think Charlotte dropped from the call. Okay, Jitanshu is here. Uh, Jitanshu, please go ahead. He, I don't think he can unmute. I don't think he can unmute. Not able to hear you. Not able to hear you. Yeah. We can't hear you. Yeah, maybe. Um, Jitanshu. Yeah. Do you want to speak? We can hear you now. Can you introduce yourself? No, we're not mm-hmm. able to hear him. No. Uh, oh. Jitanshu, do you want to remove your earphones and try it? Maybe yeah. if that's a way out. No. Let's start. We we wait and we just meanwhile mercy. If you're there, do you want to unmute and share with us? I'm not sure if Mar- okay, Mar- is on you. Go ahead, Mar- Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone from here in Nigeria. I am Messi Hogumulu Oluyemi, a PhD student from the University of Technology, Hakure, here in Nigeria. Well, I am a forest biologist, and then I have passion towards 
sustainable forest management. But most importantly, I love the environment to be what it's supposed to be. And I know ocean to marine technology is part of the environment. And therefore I'm looking forward to seeing a particular, uh, a world whereby life in the ocean have been preserved as well as life even outside the ocean also are not being affected by the current environmental pollution. So my passion is how do we make the environment to stay clear of all these pollutants? And so I'm looking forward to, I've learned a lot from your insightful presentation and I'm looking forward to even learn more and even have a, a, a very close relationship with you for further um, research in my career as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Absolutely, Mercy. We, we look forward to taking this beyond the session as well. Um, Charlotte has dropped out of the call, uh, Marissa, so there's any way we can just check. Yep. Uh, and I'm Jitan contacting her, but okay, um, yeah, maybe uh, Jitanshu. Yeah, Jitanshu, if uh, your mic is working, uh, I'm going to unmute. Jitanshu, are you able to unmute? No, doesn't look like it. Yeah, I, there's a problem. So one thing you can do, Jitansha, is you can just type in about yourself and um, everything with your connection with uh, marine and uh, the ocean. You can just share it with us in the chat and we'll definitely read it out, um, if that's okay with you. And uh, Marissa, I, I hand it back to you. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Dr. Norma and Anna, please. <laughs> sure, thank you, Priyanka. So. Uh, my name is Anna Henhausen. I am from Mexico City, and I, I, am, um, I am part of a pop family where I um, coordinate the Pop Ocean Initiative, which is really exciting because we have gotten to meet amazing young people who are doing really cool projects. And what we try to do is guide them towards making these ideas a reality or their projects even bigger. And I also have um, I also work in Plastic Oceans Mexico where we um, talk about the um, issue of plastic pollution and we try to bring everyone to learn about the importance of the circular economy. And I have a startup uh, called The Color Book where we help people understand their carbon and water footprints and reduce them through different actions that they can take in their day-to-day -day lives as they, re as they gain sustainable rewards by doing them. And that's me. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Dr. Dharma. Thank you, Priyanka. Hello, my name is Norma. I'm based in Mexico City. I am a professor at the National Polytechnic Institute in Mexico. And I, I am a mentor of POP also, like uh, Anna. And uh, well, I work on uh, marine science since uh, 40 years ago and uh, devoted to the ocean biological oceanography and marine biochemistry. And I work on coastal area and development of coastal area and also in climate change. Thank you so much. I'm with you. Thank you so much, Dr. Hey. Uh, Thanks, yeah. Thanks, Priyanka. Thanks, everyone, for the fantastic introductions. And uh, I just have to say, I'm I'm actually on a trip, so that's why I'm in a. You can see <laughs> the hotel room be behind me. I have to keep noticing that, but um, it's really great to meet everybody, Charlotte. I'm so glad you you missed a few of the introductions. Really fascinating group, but we're really glad to have you back. So you're you are muted though. Um, so we did just finish, let's see, do we, are you able to unmute? We just, just finished with introductions and, um, Charlotte, I would love it if you are ready. We don't have actually a lot of time. We have about 15, 20 minutes left in the presentation. That should be enough time to talk about the blue economy and conservation. And so I'm just going to what we're going to, I'm going to ask you if you can talk about the blue economy and then marine conservation careers. And I think instead of looking at the slide, I'm going to uh, stop sharing and put you on, pin you so you're big on the screen and mm -hmm. let you, let you, so we have folks um, from India, we have folks from Africa, we've got a lot, really big global audience here of really interesting people um, that want to hear more about the blue economy. I will hand it to you and your octopus friend. <laughs> Octavia. Octavia, thank you. <laughs> so, um, well, 
I think it's really important not to get too up, uh, up in the air about uh, it being something that's hard. Basically, uh, what, what, the, what this is going to be is, is, is the same thing that it's been since people began to form communities and, uh, and do things from all through history. Our entire history and our accomplishments have all been the result of cooperation and working together and you know coordinating things and and uh, being and caring for one another essentially and uh, it's it's just that we need to to incorporate all of life on earth in order to do this job and it's a little bit you know complicated if you think about it that way but reality is that um, the blue economy now is just an, is, is in another phase of evolution um, that we've been having to go through over, you know, millennia. And uh, so we just need to realize that nothing is really sort of new under the sun, if you will. I mean, shipping is going to be shipping, but it's going to have different vessels. And the 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 thing the cargo is going to be different. Uh, we have we have created for ourselves some really serious problems, which are going to require a lot of cooperation. Uh, I believe that the the uh, the plastic pollution issue is probably one of the biggest that we're going to have to deal with, and um, and that means sometimes new science, sometimes uh, just looking at things in a different way um, in order to get it done. I, someone was telling me just yesterday, uh, giving me an update on some things happening in the general area of the Caribbean, that apparently it's been a practice of hotels to dig down into the beaches deep, 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 and then bury the plastic underneath the sand. And you know, every time that there, there is a, a, a hurricane, it unearths much more plastic. So that's, a, you know, that's a piece of information that I don't believe anybody has ever mentioned to me, although I, I remembered seeing something like that in one of the countries in the Caribbean. Uh, and it seemed to be the case that that's, that that was what was happening. They were just covering it up, putting, putting it in a, a big pit and then covering it up. So we're, we're going to find that there are a lot of things that are going to be particularly hard to do. But uh, if we don't do it, we will suffer. Um, so one of, one of the key things I think to, to think about is what are those, what are those uh, innovations that we can come up with? Not just necessarily uh, technology, it could be something just very simple, um, that, but, we, but we have to, to address it and we have to have you know, if, for example, if we were to, to bid, dig up all that plastic, what are we going to do it? Where's the supply chain for that? So uh, I know that the IUCN has a supply chain project uh, that they are trying out in um, Fiji and some of the and a couple of places in the Caribbean, um, just because that would be good um, uh, to do. And, and see if there isn't something better that can, can be accomplished um, by de doing things differently. But reality is that probably the replacement for plastic has to be found that is more, um, what I would call um, uh, more friendly to the environment, that's basically. But um, it's, that's what I think we've got. And I see questions in the chat probably so we don't um, have questions we don't have questions yet but i'm encouraging folks to, to ask questions if they have them i i think you're on to a really important point that we need something to replace plastic because i think until there we have a replacement people are going to continue to use it i don't know is that what you're thinking as well yes and i i i think yeah because it's unfortunately it's very helpful at times but it's also uh, it's, it's also going to come back to haunt us even more in the future, I think, than it is now. 
So we really got to, you know, try to find a way to live differently too. So this is, so that's part of it is people's behavior has got to change. In fact, that's not just part of it. It's the essential piece of it really is that if we can't get people to do, do things differently, then we're going to be stuck. So I think uh, it's, there's a lot to be said for people just doing small things like talking to their families and, and learning how to recycle um, and uh, things like that. Um, and, and, you know, there's that, so plastic is one of the big topics. Another is water. We've got to deal with our, our, the water. We know we're going to, we are going to run out of water if we don't take action now. And that's, and, and then, you know, to me, the one that's the hardest is, is how are we going to get the health of the ocean back sufficiently that we will be able to have oxygen produced by some of the, um, plankton that's that's very tiny and 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 plants but we've got to make the ocean healthy again or else you know it isn't going to perform all of the wonderful um, services that we have come to to rely on so charlotte a question so you outlined uh we've got to figure out plastic we've got we have to eliminate plastic we need a replacement i think that's a good way of saying it we we need to figure out how we're going to continue to have enough water <laughs> it may not be a product it may be um just a change in behavior uh excellent um and then we need to restore the ocean i see that somebody raised their hand Vinny um, yes uh, uh go ahead my, okay Marisa, do you want to keep questions? the questions for the end, or do you want to? Uh, I, I think we're okay. going to run out of time, so I think okay. we should just ask, ask questions now. Hello. Okay. Yes, Lily, you can go ahead. Yeah. I think we should also um, t say a little bit about conservation careers. They're going okay. to be everywhere. Hello. Hello. Yes, Lily, okay. we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Actually, I want to exchange on plastic. No, uh, we have been talking about uh, changing, uh, uh, maybe stopping the use of plastic, but I believe that is uh, not really the problem. The problem stands at, change, at proposing something. We have been using plastic. People have been using, the population has been using plastic for long. And uh, for them to just stop one day, using this plastic without the, 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 without the government or without the community proposing something to them will be difficult. And last time I remember in Cameroon, we have two types of plastic. We have biodegradable plastic and non-biodegradable plastics. So now when they propose the biodegradable plastics to the population, it was difficult for them to, to buy because actually it was really expensive. You see a plastic, is 100 francs CFA, and why the non degradable plastic would be uh, uh, maybe uh, 50 francs or maybe 25 francs. So you see, obviously the population will go for the cheaper one rather than going for the one that will be perishable. The perishable is expensive and the non perishable is less expensive. So you see, the, pop the, the problem is not maybe stopping the use of the plastic, but proposing something that is good for a cheaper price, so much that the population, we go for it. So the issue is not maybe stopping them, but the issue is to propose something. Let's, let's stay think on what we can propose rather than stopping it. Let's think on what we can propose to the population. If we think on what we can propose, it will be doing good, rather than thinking on how to stop it. If we think on how to stop it, we'll be limited. But what we can propose will be good because energy yeah, I, will I be think, good. I'm gonna interrupt but, for a second. I think that's a good point. I think. Why don't we let Charlotte address that, and then I want her to have a chance to um, also talk about ocean careers. Do you have Do you have anything to to say in response, Charlotte? Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. Well, there's nothing that. I mean, yes, it, he's makes a very good point here that um, you know people will will choose an economic. Um, they'll make, it's it's an economic uh, issue. You know what people buy and what they don't buy. But I think we can also start looking at it from the perspective of some of the policies that, that uh, 
countries have in in play. You know that they're just there are lot paper bags are a much better better solution. They 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 may not be waterproof, but um, but if we run out of water, we're, we, that won't be a problem anyway. So <laughs> I'm just kidding, but. Um, no, I really do want to get on to, to careers because there are so yep. many, so many um, careers that are out there. Um, I think some of the very obvious ones that people have taken on, um, Maritza has taken on uh, a career that has to do with trying to run a, a nonprofit organization that's, that's supporting a lot of the goals that we have. Um, the um, there in the ocean community, you can you can work on marine protected areas. You can work on uh, hardening our 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 shores. Um, we you have to constantly be thinking about the evolution and on an island of you know what are you going to do when the sea level rise gets to the next level. I mean, already you have a lot of islands that are losing their agricultural land because the salt water is making it um, difficult for it to be used again um, because of the salt. And um, there are a number of other um, kinds of conservation or um, research on species. This is the, 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 the um, there is just, in the science part of it alone, there are just so many pathways. And I think what, what, uh, what my recommendation is, if you're interested, whatever you're interested in, dig into that because it's your passion for, you know, something that you happen to like, you know, I, one of the, one of the pathways to, and I've learned uh, that's for, for good conservation planning uh, is maps. And it's, it, I think you could take a, a, a course in uh, ArcGIS and learn how to make the maps and things because almost everything that we will be doing in the next few decades really uh, will require location-based analysis. And so, you know, just being a good map maker is going to, to make things better. Um, and um, and there are just so many different topics. You've got you've got all of nature to choose from. You could choose plants, animals, um, you know, uh, aerosol, plankton. I mean, you know, it's the, the the whatever is whatever is the thing that most interests you is the thing that I think you should pour all of your effort into. And then if if you once you've got that one under control, pick another one. You know, don't don't think you have to be in the same career your entire life, you know, you know because you may want to try one for a while and you, and learn what you can from that one and then try another one and before you know it you're going to be a lot better off uh, because you know a lot of different kinds of disciplines that are needed and it makes it easier for you to relate to other people as well. Charlotte, I think that's, a, I want to have you keep going, but I think that's a really important point. I just wanted to call it out because I don't know what message other people hear from their parents and teachers when you're growing up. But I always kind of, when I was young, I thought you had to pick something and that was kind of it. And it felt like such an overwhelming big decision to make because it felt like once you, I always thought when I was a kid, once you made this decision, you were, that was like, that was the end of the decision. But I think what you're saying is, one can try one one direction and possibly even change at some other point. Is that what you, is that the message you're giving? Yeah. Multiple times, not just two or three. You can, in my case, I it like five or six, seven times, you know. And each time, it gave me more perspective on the entire um, thing that we're trying to accomplish, and it and it may helped me understand. The, the work of some people. I, I tell you that, that, I, I, that the, the scientists are so amazing and they have to work so hard with their peer reviewed data and all of the other things. It's, it's, this is not just hard work. It's, I mean, hard data. It's, it's hard, hard <laughs> to, to do these things. So um, I think it's, it, it's important to know that every, 
every career is important in one way or another. And um, we, need, we need a lot of different kinds of people doing these things. So, but don't be afraid of trying a new, a new route because if you get a little tired of doing something, change. <laughs> so. That's, that's really fantastic advice. Um, I will, we can, uh, Charlotte, can you stay on about 10 minutes past the hour? And we're actually at the top of the hour somehow. So, okay, pre Anna asked we could stay a little longer. So we're happy to stay on for another 10 minutes and continue on this conversation. I wanted to also just ask um, if folks have any questions about conservation careers, feel free to raise your hands or put them in the chat. Uh, uh, Charlotte gave some really good examples, I think, of, of different possibilities as well. And I, I can say that I, the career I'm in currently is with a technology that wasn't even invented <laughs> when I was growing up. Uh, so, you know, the world, it does open up and things change. And I think that's something really important to keep it in mind. Um, okay, we have a question in here. So it says, Mindful of the fact that we have a board decision maker, I think states can propose perishable plastics or bags and limited. Yes, back on the topic of plastics. So yes, states can propose perishable plastics or bags and limit the cost by supporting it and voting a budget for that. So I think that speaks to the point of the importance of policy. And yeah, I think, you know, Charlotte, I know you've done a lot of policy work. And as we're waiting to see if there's any questions, can you talk a little bit about more about uh, what policy careers are? Because um, I don't know, when you say policy, folks on the line might not know what that, what does that mean? You know, like, what do you mean by a pol career in policy? It, 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 uh, it, it means that what you're going to do is to engage with uh, the people who are essentially making the rules. And, and, and it's really important to, to have people that do that and do that well. And um, it often has a legal degree, but it doesn't have to. Um, and and it, because anyone, honestly, anyone can. I took um, a couple of courses at the law school at the University of Texas as an undergraduate. I talked them into it and because they were doing some experimental things and in, in the, the University of Texas's curriculum. And uh, they, they were a little intrigued in the idea of seeing whether you know, someone who didn't have all of the requisite courses that you're supposed to have first could do two courses uh, there at the law school and, and survive you know, and get and actually make, any, make the grades you know, and all that. And uh, what I found out is that it's, it's, it's really just about being able to go to the library and look things up. That to me, that's law school. And so, you, you know, you just have to learn how, how the system is set up on the, in the things, but it's, it's, um, and, and when you're doing things like I'm, I'm as a member of the high seas Alliance right now, I, I represent uh, mission blue on behalf of Sylvia Earl um, when I, when I can. And um, it's, it's really pretty easy. It's, it's about trying to find out what the problems are, where, where are the disagreements, and you know, what is the breakthrough thing that you could do in making it possible for people to find a better way to make the rules um, and, and, get, and then, of course, get them implemented and also then enforced. But, but policy, if you, if, is really the, it's, it's like playing a game in a way. You just, everybody has to play by the rules. And if you don't know what the rules are, you're not gonna be a very good player. And people who are, you know, in, and it's a, it's a really kind of fun thing to do in my opinion, you know, to get people together and, and brainstorm and try to figure out how to make the, the way we do things improved, you know? So um, it's, it's a lot of times it's just people need to, to look at these things and realize that there's no, no magic to it. It's just applying yourself <laughs> and, 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 and engaging other people to, to engage as well until you all come up with something that, that you can all agree on. And then you can go, you know, you can go to Rio plus 20 and say, 
this is what we need. We need the ocean to be in the preamble of the meeting in this place. And if you don't go and you don't ask for it, you don't get it. And you do it as a team. You don't necessarily do it as just one person at a time. You know, so, um, and we did that in Rio. We did it in, um, we did it in Paris. And every single time everybody said, oh, nothing's gonna happen at that meeting. And, you know, a couple of us would say, of course it will happen if we go there and if we are organized and if we have a plan of attack, we'll get what we want. And, and we did, you know, but, they, but most people were saying, let's don't go, we'll let's save the money. And, you know, it's like, no, we have to do this. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like strategies of, and also collaboration. So finding other people that feel the same and can help make that influence because yes, one person can have a big influence, but getting more people who are like-minded together can have a bigger influence. So I think that's a really, that's a really important point. Um, thank you for explaining that. I know that you have a lifetime of work in that area. So there's a lot to talk about. Um, and this was just scratching the surface. Sia had a question, and so uh, I wanted to see if you wanted to unmute and ask your question. Yeah. Hi, yeah. So um, I had one of the questions regarding one of the skills you mentioned, um, the skill of map making. I didn't quite understand that. So would you mind elaborating on that? So um, what, one, one of, I, I didn't mention it earlier, but one of the things that made, made uh, me very successful uh, when I was working in American Samoa and I became the, the coastal zone manager was mm -hmm. that I grew up and, and I had to be in charge and I had to make some decisions about what we were going to do. And I, I grew up in a, in a farm and ranch family and we had to always know, we had to know where all of our good soil was, where all of our bad soil was, where, so that for the farming and, you know, those kinds of things. And, um, what we always needed was a map. And, you know, so we kind of would stake it out, you know, and say, okay, this is, we're gonna put this, this crop, crop here because this has the better soil for that particular product. I mean, that particular plant. Anyway, but that it, everything these days is being driven by, by maps and, and for example, if none of these things that are happening with Amazon, you know, shipping things all over the country, you know, they, they're now creating trucks that will be doing the, the deliveries without any person aboard. Same thing is mm -hmm. going to happen with ships on the ocean. And, but, you, but the maps that, the, that um, make all of those things possible are going to be really important. And this, and in, in the ocean um, that they're, the, Esri is a the uh, is is an organization in Redlands, California. They have a a, 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 a school of ArcGIS and how to do these maps. It's amazing. Go to their website, and um, their chief scientist, uh, ocean scientist, is Dawn Wright, who um, is a an African American woman from the United States who ha is just a genius, actually. And, but they teach people how to do these mapping systems. And I learned a lot of that from the work I did at Google. I was fortunate in that, but I don't think I ever would have been selected for it if I hadn't been able to talk about maps and the importance of them. And, um, and Google Earth, for example, is a map really. And uh, that's where I was working. So um, I, I, that's some of these specialized skill sets are more important than others. And I think I, I would say that the mapping thing is, is one of the most important things that anybody could do. Um, one of the people that I worked with at Esri uh, who, had, who was a student and did some pro we did some projects together was from Nepal. And he happened to you know, find out about this, this college in the Redlands in California and, and got a, got a um, got a uh, scholarship and he, he, he's doing very, very good things. And I, I think it's important to pick up little, what, what seem like little skills, but they're very strategic skills um, that will help you understand. And even, even um, 
make a plan for how to use data. It is so like it, the foundation for bigger projects and ideas. Yes, and to yes, and to and to manage them. You know, it's 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 literally it maps are a management tool on mm -hmm. you know just not getting lost, for example. <laughs> so, so. But also and, for also for resource management, oh, right? Yes, for resource yeah. management. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, there's, it's an, um, that's, I think it's one of the better basic skills that people can pick up. Frankly. And Sia, Sia, I put the Esri cause it's not. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, I put the link in the chat so you could see where, where that is. And uh, Norma also made a pitch for marine spatial planning. I know that's really important to you, Norma. Well, <laughs> marine spatial planning is, is um, now, you can do it in units in the ocean because of things that have been created by Esri. So um, they, they, there was sort of a competition between Google Earth and Esri, but um, in the end, Esri just won that battle easily. <laughs> so so, so um, anyway, but it's, it's, it's a wonderful, it's, it, it's, it's a wonderful skill set. but that's not the only one. You, you, ne you need to have a good, um, writing skills, that's an important one because you've got to be able to put things in a plan that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think uh, maybe there's time for a pop session sometime in the future about mapping <laughs> and, and skills and, and some of these topics I think could be expanded on. I don't know if we want to take one more question and then wrap up. I know we're a few minutes over. Um, but do we want to share any additional information or does anyone else have a last question? I don't know if, uh, Charlotte, you had any parting words. That's uh, so much. <laughs> yeah. My parting words are, you know, everybody's got my Gmail address. Don't send it to my EarthX address. But if, if, if you get charlotte.vic at gmail.com, if you need and have a question or you don't, you know, you want, you know, you just want to, to unload an idea or, or just, you know, ask for some give advice. Just let, just don't feel shy about asking me because I'm, I will answer as Maritza knows. <laughs> that's, that's an incredible offer. And um, I and think we're all very appreciative of you giving some of your time here. You have a lifetime worth of wisdom to share. And I, I think it's fantastic also that uh, for folks who ask questions, so thanks so much for asking questions. I put Charlotte's contact information in the, the chat. I, I think we might have to wrap up. So Anna, I don't know how you wanna end, or Priyanka, how you wanna end this session, but <laughs> I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Um, so I think, yeah, we, we are a little bit over time, but thank you for sharing Charlotte's contact on the chat because that way, if some people have additional questions on conservation careers, it'd be great for them to reach out. Um, so I just wanna thank you both so, so much for being here with us today and for this amazing presentation. I learned so much and I think it's so, it's so amazing to really get to learn from so many different people with wonderful experiences. So, so thank you and I hope the participants enjoyed this session as much as I did. Um, I will hand it over to Priyanka to see if she would like to add anything else. No, thank you so much. I think uh, this has been uh, one of the most informal and comfortable sessions we have had where uh, we've just been able to discuss and almost felt like talking to mentors that you would have uh, like to reach out to. So thank you, Charlotte and Marissa, for being those mentors for us for the past one hour and guiding us. And um, absolutely, we do have the capacity building uh, sessions that we are planning and we would love to incorporate some of these topics uh, and have you both join us again and uh, take dig further into these areas that we have been discussing. Um, and to everyone, yes, thank you so much, Charlotte, for sharing your email ID. I think it would make it so much more easier for everyone to just uh, share their thoughts, ideas, questions. So if anyone wants to reach out, you can reach out to Charlotte. And in addition to that, you do have Anna and my uh, email ID. So do reach out to us. Marissa has also shared her email ID. Thank you so much, Marissa. And I would like to thank all of the participants for joining in. Uh, thank you for making this discussion so meaningful, engaging, and for sharing uh, a little bit about yourselves and where you all are coming from and your 
our relationship with the ocean. Uh, we do hope you continue doing the work you're doing. I hope this session inspired each one of you to stay on track and maybe do more. Um, and with that, uh, I would like to, I think, conclude today's session. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. And we do hope you can join us for phase two of the camp, which is scheduled to start around July or August of the coming year. So we look forward to seeing you there as well. Thank you, Priyanka. Thank you, Marisa and Charlotte. See you soon. Thank you so much for everything. Yeah, you too. You're the one that's been doing the biggest work, I think, on the whole group here today. <laughs> I know. Oh, Lord. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think we're about the same age, though, Norma. <laughs> so. can, can you take the live off, Anna? And maybe we could stay on the line. The presenters could stay on. Looks like everyone's